Well, welcome everyone to the September 5th, 2024 OSPO Working Group meeting. There are some items on the agenda which are carried forward from last time, but if you have any agenda items that you would like to bring forward, I, I would welcome those. Oh, Chan, I see Chan's here. Chan took the lead data science stuff with Don Hayes. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Sorry. I got confused. Um, so uh, Don is looking for feedback on the practitioner guide for security. Um, that's this link here in the minutes. And uh, she's asked for that feedback by tomorrow, actually, or the 6th, which is tomorrow, right? Or no? Yes, it is. It is. It's Thursday. So yeah, if you uh, have a chance, a uh, big reminder on this one is that it is not intended to cover the whole universe of security. It's only intended to be an introductory early stage guide to identifying key security metrics that are part of the chaos definitions. So uh, it's very, very lightweight compared to how a lot of security um, guides might be printed. All right. So please, please get that done. Uh, it looks like there is a, a new blog post that might be of interest to this group. I wonder where this was, should it say at the top? Oh, it was at the open, I think it was at the um, New York thing. New York thing, yeah. So check that out when you have a chance. I see that uh, Remy, you've uh, put in some CMS OSPO updates. Do you wanna take us through those? Oh, wait a minute, you know what? I'm not sharing my screen, which I intended to. Sorry about that. You didn't really know what you're, what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I it's, yeah, I wasn't, uh, didn't come in fully prepared. I was navigating to the links that I talked about a second ago, though, which right. turned out not to be super helpful. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, couple of updates. Uh, the first one is, is we have a, a new URL for our OSPO. Uh, it's official, go.cms.gov slash OSPO, where you can find our official webpage that's on a government URL. So we're, we're super excited about that. Uh, this is just a page where we're posting like various links to articles and news and presentations and giving a little bit of credit um, and then letting people, uh, providing them with contact info and links to our repos and stuff like that at the bottom too. So uh, it's it's up, it's new, it's short. Uh, it's a lot shorter than telling people digital dash service slash open dash source dash program dash office. So we're happy to have something that's easy to share with the community. Uh, that's the, the first update. And the second update is that uh, we have a new team member that joined us uh, that will be hanging out with us for at least a couple of weeks, uh, Sarah Carr, who is also joining us on the call today. Um, she's a presidential management fellow uh, that's joined us uh, on a detail. And uh, I, if you wanna say anything and introduce yourself, Sarah, you're more than welcome. Hello, I actually introduced myself briefly, I think on a prior call, um, but yeah, hello. Um, so. Welcome. <laughs> nice to have, Glad you, have you here. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it, background in, uh, well, far too many things, but uh, some of those are open source and data science. And some of those are algorithms. Sarah's very mathy, so we like having Sarah. Yep, Welcome. yep, yep. Thank and you. I'll also mention that uh, Sarah was the, the chair for the, the PyCon tutorials, I believe. So also has strong Python connections and community connections in open source. So you know, we're really lucky to be working with her and happy to have her join the meeting today and be hanging out with us generally. Excellent. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome, Sarah. Uh, I, I guess I would maybe observe on the, the OSPO link that you pointed out, Remy, that some of this uh, emerges from a recent uh, government announcement that uh, open source program offices are actually going to be part of what the U.S. government does. 
I don't know if you want to share any links related to that. I think you may have in Slack already. Yeah, sure. I can. Uh, Not to I put would, you on the spot. Sorry. No, no, uh, it's <laughs> fine. Uh, we. Um, I wasn't sure if I'd already shared that update in a previous uh, meeting, so I didn't want to uh, double double share it. But uh, let me pull up the uh, the press release. Um, recently, uh, there was a a 2023 report that came out on the RFI for open source software security. Um, this was an RFI that was uh, launched at DEF CON last year. Um, and then one year later, uh, they came out with the summary report. And in it, there are six key focus areas that are a priority of the Biden-Harris administration going forward to address open source software security. And uh, bullet point number six uh, is establishing the first open source program office at a United States federal agency. And uh, they pointed to us. So that was pretty cool. Uh, to get that recognition. So it's officially official. We're the first OSPO in the U.S. federal government. Um, definitely happy about that. Uh, this is just the beginning, of course. Establishing is the start. So uh, we're looking forward to continued partnership with folks like yourselves. You know, big shout out to folks like Chan and some of the other, you know, Professor Goggins and all the other OSPO folks that, you know, continue to work with us. Um, you know, we don't I don't see our friends from uh, from Microsoft here on the line or no, James is here. Yes. So, um, you know, thank you everyone for working with us as we are establishing our baseline. Uh, we're going to be hiring uh, two more digital core fellows in the fall. So uh, Sachin and Dina, hopefully will be joining us in the October uh, meeting, perhaps. And uh, they'll be helping to work and build out more of our metric suite, as well as our repo uh, scaffolder project and maybe some new projects as well, now that we're getting some more hands on keyboards. So uh, chaos is central to our metric strategy and a lot of our partnerships. So just again, thank you all for being a part of this uh, effort. We depend on the community and you know really appreciate all of your guidance and support and contributions. Uh, we couldn't do it without the folks here. So thank you so much. And thanks for sharing that update, Remy. It's very exciting. Remy, what was that point six you were talking about? Bullet point six, where was that? Yeah, in yeah. the... Um, if I click... It's, yep. Oh, it's there. It's, yeah. yeah. And if you go into the full report as well at the yeah. top, it's more detailed and it's on one of those pages. Uh, we're also bullet point number six. I got like you. 14 or something like that, I think it is. I was looking at those links at the bottom of that page. Yeah, page 16. Yep, that's it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. All right. And I don't know who has the UN one in. I'm guessing it's well, Georg or Matt. I, yeah, it was me listening to um, Remy talk. So we have been chatting with Michael Downey at the UN. And so we're going to um, start a group here that's taking a look at how um, we can work with the UN to help identify metrics that play a role in their SDGs. So there's, I always forget what SG, the social. Sustainable. Yeah. Sustainable. Sustainable development goals. Sustainable development goals. And so that's starting up in October. And I think the intention is to also work with member states at the UN as to how they can also kind of participate in this effort. and. The only reason I put this here is obviously listening to you talk, Remy, that that might be something that's of interest to you or just to keep an eye on as other nations are coming on board and particularly around the UN and their SDGs. And Georg is going to do a kickoff of this at Open Source Summit Europe. Yes, and there is a, uh, for anyone who is going to be there, we have a draft um agenda or facilitation guide i'll put it in the chat i'm happy to collect feedback and modify it with more good ideas i'll drop it in here oh perfect in the chat. yeah thanks Georg. remy has a hand raised yeah um, so after the UN uh, OSPOs for Good Symposium, uh, folks from the Netherlands OSPO and the Germany OSPO um, 
presented at the the workshop session, I think, the what's mm -hmm. next for open source. And yep. we talked about public code.yaml. Uh, this is like a, a metadata standard that they're using for doing their open source software inventory at the at the EU level. Um, so code.json is the standard that's used at the federal level here. And uh, our team is going in, comparing the two right now and trying to harmonize them so that we can have similar names for the metadata and optional fields for the public code.yaml so that, you know, maybe someday if we can find a grand unified open source inventory of all the government projects, uh, those things might play together nicely. Uh, it's still very early on in that exploration, but I would just say public code.yaml is definitely uh, something worth checking out uh, from the metric standpoint because it um, is a good example of you know where some of these metrics might live okay. in optional place we've been thinking about in, in our OSPO. Awesome, thanks. Do you see a standard kind of thing that's not this? Remy? Sorry, what's that? Did you say you have something that you're working on that is not this and you're trying to get it like sort of get the two to come together maybe at some point in time? Yeah, let me uh, let me dig it up. It's almost pushed to production now. Natalia is not on the call, I don't think, but um, we have a, a code.json is the standard for metadata that is used for code.gov, which is like the federal government source code policy for creating this kind of an inventory. Okay. It's very similar. But one is JSON and one is YAML and okay. one, they require slightly different things. So we're trying to create a nice Venn diagram that gets most of this stuff. Um, yeah, uh, that's really close. I think it's um, maybe in like tier three and then in the cookie cutter and then in the dot GitHub repo and then in repo metrics up a little higher and then cookie, yeah, cookie cutter. The... I, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so that's these are some of the metadata that we're gathering now. Okay. This is our first pass, but the public code.yaml has a ton of other stuff too. So we're basically adding stuff from public code.yaml into this as optional so that you know we're tracking that stuff uh, because we, we think it's a good idea and it's a good standard. Um, okay. there are some slight differences. Are you, are you are you all having conversations or is it just kind of occurring like through repositories right now? It's in a draft PR that we're hopefully going to push within the next like week or two. So okay. uh, it, yeah, it's mostly been happening uh, in like Google Docs, but we'll, we'll okay. hopefully have this out in the public here. Uh, okay. real soon. Cool. Thanks. So I see uh the next item is S bombs to include community health information. This is also and, all right. You go. So this was this came up. Um, so folks from Cyclone DX have joined some of the chaos meetings, and with respect to S bombs, at the broadest level, they are you know they provide say vulnerability and license information kind of at the and so the idea yeah. was trying to provide some deeper insight into um, the health of the communities that might be represented in, in an SBOM. And I have no idea like how this could even be <laughs> just because like health is such a dynamic topic and, you know, licenses kind of are supposed to be stable <laughs> and vulnerabilities are, I suppose, also dynamic, but I, so I'm just I'm, I'm curious what people's thoughts are on even hearing this possibly for the first time that you would modify something like Cyclone DX or SPDX to in, start including some sort of insight on the communities themselves, not just the characteristics of the software that the community is producing. That was it. I'm, so I'm curious if anybody has initial thoughts. I guess my first question would just be on the, the format and mechanism of delivery. So I guess I'm, I'm not as familiar with the tool, so I don't know what this would look like, but I think your comment on the static versus dynamic is sort of the, the 
like I wouldn't want to complete these things as S bombs are have I want to say like there's there's a lot of great they're doing. There's also a lot of challenges that already created just to create a static record of what's in your your software systems. So the idea of adding dynamic information to that just sounds terrifying. But <laughs> but it's also like this is information Agreed. that people should be considering. So if there's an easy way to add it in at the point of request. Again, like a lot of question marks around the delivery and interaction mechanism, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's going to create a lot more complexity. And so I would see these things as like a, a bonus add-on, not a default thing, because I wouldn't want to to make the generation of an S-Bond even harder than it already is. Fair. Remy has a comment in the chat that I think is, is on, on the point for that about the you know, S bomb separate from metrics and looking at that code.json file to fill in the blanks. The other thought that I had as you spoke, Sophia, was that something like an annotation of an S bomb with some of this information might help it not be conflated with the S bomb itself. What would, what does that mean? Well, it, you know, if you've, um, uh, this is a very hokey example, but I bought a copy of Benjamin Franklin's autobiography once that was annotated, and so it just had a lot of notes in the margins and at the bottoms of the page that explained the historical provenance of things or elaborated on stuff that's not actually in the book. So the idea with annotations conceptually is that it's not actually part of the SBOM, but it, as it could be statements about the SBOM or the project. I gotcha. Georg also has a comment in chat. Yeah, the what what I took away from the Cyclone DX proposal that they're considering is they want to share the status of the project. Like, is it actively maintained? Is it abandoned? Does it have one maintained? Does it have two maintainers? Um, so, and then from that to for maintainers an opportunity to say we need more funding we need more developer time we need someone with security expertise we need a marketing person so uh, with the idea as i understand it when the cyclone dx file the s bomb gets passed on you don't have to query a separate system to discover where in the supply chain is help want it and need it. Um, that's oh, so many questions. <laughs> What's that? Go ahead. I will mean, just say the question of how, how you would get the contextual information. Is this coming from like a readme at the top of the GitHub page? Or is this a mechanism for projects to put up a flag and say, hey, I need support here? The proposal is that the maintainers, as they create SBOMs to ship with their components, they can include this information. Interesting. Sorry, now I'm just curious. Um, thanks for sharing that additional detail. And, and there is a, um, if you're not seeing the chat, there's some good explanations of how the annotations are common in other settings, as well as Remy has a comment about implied health metrics. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, Remy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a stretch, but like you get version numbers out of an SBOM, you might be able to get some implied community health from that. Like they cut major and minor releases that in theory, if it's really Semver is, you know, looking at backwards compatibility or you know, if you can get the first commit, you can talk about things like release density and say, like, they do this many major releases over this amount of time, like, that can imply a certain amount of community health, but because things can be automated and, you know, it, it's a little bit of a shaky metric, I don't want to say it's, like, a great source of truth, but for just stuff that you get out of an SBOM, I think Semver can be a proxy for some of that community health, at least for, like, release schedule health. Um, and maybe a little bit of community size and release density stuff, but uh, I'd have to look more at the SBOM in question to sort of figure out what 
could be mined from it without having you cross-reference like Augur or GitHub to generate some other, you know. That's interesting. Metric. Yeah, just like using our already there without trying to go more. Um, and even like in that example, I think it's interesting because it may not be perfect, but it, it might tell you something and that makes you look a little deeper, which is what a lot of metrics do anyway. You don't just take them at face value, but they kind of point you to go look a little more deeply at something. I like that. And Georg, I did not capture what you said in the notes. So, and uh, I'll have thank you. I uh, also just see this link from Elizabeth. I don't know if uh, you want to explain what this is. Um, that is the document they're using to um, talk about what those states would be in that doc. So oh. uh, there's another there's there's another doc I'll find that has like all of the all of the information about where these conversations are happening. So like a link to their meetings, a link to their Slack, all of that stuff. I'll find that doc for y'all. If you want to join that conversation. I I just, I suppose I have a quick question about this. I have not seen these states adopted in any place that I've noticed. Are they being adopted or is there a file that one would look for this declaration of a state in? I think that's what they're trying to start. Okay. Is like, this is the proposal that they want to start doing. Cool. And it would, it would be in a doc, uh, I forget what the name of it is, but something, you know, something.md, just like it would be contributing or license or whatever else. Cool. This, I mean, what is helpful about these kinds of declarative or lightweight analytical tags is, is they do provide additional signal about project health and risk that can be interpreted. And I think Sophia's question and some of the other questions are what or how would this be part of or adjacent to an SBOM? I guess I'm also just skeptical of anything that's manually inputted. Just like the maintainability of that over time and how often it's been is being maintained. I think it's it would be amazing to have this information directly from the maintainers and then from their perspective versus trying to infer metrics that we collect anyway about what's happening. I was just, again, reading reports on how to detect dependency abandonment versus a project that's just kind of stale that will have some kind of revival. Like you only really know that if you ask the maintainer, are you actually doing anything here? It might be like, yeah, I'll pick it back up later. Like that's the kind of subtle subjective information that you could get from this, but asking a maintainer to maintain yet another manually inputted status check like it's, I think it's a bit too cumbersome for anyone to do over time. But again, I'm curious. I'm curious to see if this would work in practice. Um, so thanks for bringing this example. It's, it's interesting to see this progress. This is another link uh, that Elizabeth shared in chat that gives you kind of the use cases for something like this. So I'll put that in the notes as well. Uh, um, Remy, go ahead, Georg. The this uh, working group working on this proposal is meeting at the same time right now as we are meeting and they're moving it to one hour later so that we're not conflicting with this meeting. So anyone who is interested in two weeks, they will be meeting right after this OSPO chaos meeting. That's good. Okay. news. That is good news. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Georg. somebody's putting that in there thank you go ahead finish my thought anonymous kraken well thanks for the feedback this is really helpful i'm glad that i was able to bring it up here yeah no led to some very good discussion i think dovetails with some of the things that's happening in the u.s government and around open source and just to Remy's note in chat that the public code.yaml does have a field for something similar to this. So let's keep an eye on, on these kinds of declarative things and 
potentially automating some of it, like through Cyclone DX. We'll see what happens. So the next item is replace with this with your agenda item. Are there any agenda items that anyone wants to bring forward right now? I got mine, so all good for me. All right. A few reminders here um, that uh, Slack has a forum for newsworthy going that's on really the blog post, conference talks, and other chaos news. And there is an s bomb o -rama happening next week in uh, both virtually and in Denver. And I know Rhea asked if anybody was going yesterday in the new WG government Slack channel, which if you mm -hmm. haven't noticed, we've, we've got that out there now. If you have government OSPO things that you wanted to chat about. I don't know if anybody can speak to the s bomb o -rama who is here. I certainly can't because I am only aware of it, but not knowledgeable about it. It did lead to a discussion of renaming Chaos Con to Chaos Orama at one point. I, I, <laughs> so, I, uh, if you register, the, they have a streaming version for it. Uh, that's everything I know. I'm registered. I'm going to attend virtually. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd be curious to hear if you have anything to share back at, next time we meet, Damien. Thank hey. you. Remy, you unmuted too before I was mentioning Chaos Orama. So <laughs> it, it runs once a year. I think this is the second or the third one. Um, one of the days is like a workshop day where um, people talk about, you know, standard conference stuff. And one of them is sort of like a vendor day. So there's going to be a bunch of vendor uh expo if you will for people who do s bomb related stuff um it's run by CISA. um so there's a lot of government presence there but there's also more community and, and private sector presence as well so i won't be there i have a conflict i have another event happening that day but um yeah it's uh it's it's online so you can go it's in denver in person or you can uh, participate remotely The uh, CFP for the Linux Member Summit has passed, but it is November 19th to the 21st in Napa. And if you have podcast ideas, please email them to podcast at chaos.community, home of our podcast suggestion box. We'd be keen to hear uh, about many of the topics I think that we discussed here today uh, would make fantastic topics for podcasting, particularly the Cyclone DX and the semantic versioning, the public dot yaml public code dot yaml many other things so i'll just add here it does tentatively look like chaos con would be january 30th thirtieth, because fosdem is the first and second and there's an ofe summit thing on the 31st and we last year we were the day before and it worked out really really well we're still waiting on actual well, final confirmation yeah. right yeah yes, so we, it's, we wait for fosdem to actually declare their dates even though it's always the first saturday in february we we still can't plan until they say yes indeed it is the first saturday in february this year as well so i'm sure that will i expect that to come in the next month since i'm sure we are not the only people asking them about it <laughs> we've just started planning it this week yeah, like literally two days ago, it came up in the public in the community meeting. Well, that brings us to the pleasant conclusion of our agenda, uh, some 18 minutes ahead of schedule. If anyone else has anything they want to bring up, uh, speak now or hold your peace for two weeks. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Take care, all. Thanks. Bye.